Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. We are hanging out today in my top secret demise bunker. One of many. I said guys I was going to find the best place on the server to repurpose as a demise bunker. Well believe me, I did it. No one will ever think to look for me here directly above iTrade. It's like they're inside of a diamond mine. They can't even perceive what I see, which is mostly this wall. And a sign that says, now leaving at Joe Hills' demise bunker, number 2584-Zeppelin-Cherry. There's I trade way down there. Of course, we are wearing absolutely nothing to keep us safe inside of our bunker because, you know, that's the point of having a bunker. You don't have to constantly live in fear when you're inside. Now, of course, on your way out the door, you do need to destroy all the evidence you were ever there. You know? Boom. So there we go. We are out of our bunker. All we got to do now is take these uh, blocks of diamonds here. And then, let's see, we're going to go ahead and add 26 and 64. Uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure if we carry the one, uh, we're still 10 short. And then we can purchase one of these wonderful Sahara Now membership passes. So now, if we ever need a desert that's as large as all of North Africa, or Northern Africa, depending on how you modify your nouns, will be all set. But what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit serious. In fact, it's so serious, I probably should go collect my thoughts inside of my next bunker. Time skip! Like the diamonds in the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. You know, and the days of our lives are connected to the days of the lives of those who have come before us. Generationally speaking, it's easy for us to look at the folks around us in our own cohort and go, yeah, this is us. But like, the thing is, it's more than just us. There's there's the, the folks who have already, you know, laid down their lives below. There's the people who are still fallen. There's us standing on the corpses of these folks, you know. And it's all kind of a general historical mishmash hodgepodge of like, I don't know, misunderstanding, mistrust, that sort of thing. And I gotta say, one thing that really caught my attention lately is the rise of the uh, OK Boomer mimetic utterance. Now, if you have not seen this, it's uh, OK is, of course, an abbreviation uh, that is short for all correct because there was a big fad back in the early 20th century where they would create abbreviations for things that were not actually the same. As, like, they would start with letters intentionally that were different from the other ones. Wait, is this whole thing a spawning platform? Okay, whatever. Anyway, so, of course, boomers refers to not the Left for Dead enemies of the boomers, but in fact, the uh, baby boomers, the generation of Americans born uh, after World War II. Now, some generations are transatlantic. In fact, there's an argument that any country that has experienced a baby boom has its own baby boomers. They just might not be from around the same time. Like the Canadian baby boom ended in like 1962, whereas the American baby boom traditionally ends around 1964, according to Wikipedia which I am reciting from memory. So if it's wrong, somebody changed it after I looked at it, or I'm an unreliable narrator. So, okay, Boomer, what is it? What does it mean? I gotta say, I think okay, Boomer is an incredible anti-immune response. I don't know if you guys have ever had, like, some sort of allergen that, like, caused your immune system to go nuts, but... Basically, that is what OK Boomer is, okay? People are like, OK Boomer is symptomatic of all the problems America has right now. No, the symptoms are symptomatic of all the problems America has right now. OK Boomer is basically our society responding to those symptoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at how this has happened before. And I think, in particular, this reminds me quite a bit of the Occupy Wall Street movement. Because I remember having dinner with some family members talking about Occupy Wall Street. And they were like, I don't understand why people... Oh, this is a bad place for a bunker. Okay, whatever, too bad. We're already... We're, we're too dug in. We're entrenched. I don't understand why people have to just make a big deal of being obnoxious in New York instead of fixing these problems themselves. 
And I made the point like, hey, you know, sometimes young people don't feel empowered or don't feel they have the cultural buy-in to, what is this place? This is literally a trap. Okay. Um, leaving. Wow, I can't believe we cleared that tree. Anyway, sometimes young people don't feel culturally empowered to affect the sort of change they want to see. And they can't even agree on what the proper mechanism would be to affect change. What is the proper fix? All they can agree on is there is a problem that is currently being ignored. And we need to call attention to it. And I think that uh, basically Occupy Wall Street, yeah, there were some specific demands that were made. And there was just a lot of general unrest that people wanted to register. And so folks went out there, they registered their uh, displeasure, and, uh, you know, some things happened. Not as much as they might have liked, but it was, it was kind of one of those things, though, where sometimes we're not at a, a critical tipping point yet. And there end up being practice runs for things in weird ways. And I, I suspect that the Occupy Wall Street movement, to some degree... Is, it was kind of the, you know, five minutes too early uh, of whatever we're about to see next. I think if if you were happy with Occupy Wall Street but you wanted more, I'm looking at this OK Boomer thing and I'm thinking, yeah, we're about to get more. Because even though on its surface it is just a general statement of displeasure, uh, a, like someone dismissing the person they are conversing with, the reason that it caught on like wildfire was that so many people were ready to dismiss authority. Authority has basically lost its place, and specifically the authority that is attributed with the generations that came before the speakers. So, what does this mean for you and I today? Well, we're going to have to see what is in this. Oh, I can't eat it, because I'm not hungry enough. Oh, there's also a room here. And there's just diamonds all over the server. Everybody on the server has diamonds. I felt so fancy with my blocks of diamonds. Oh, I wasted them all. Oh, I hope that was funny. I hope people laughed at me wasting all my diamonds on that Sahara Now membership. Oh, well. Time skip. Wait, is this a game show? What is this? Oh, I'm in a pit. So the way I see it, basically, we're at kind of an inflection point where a lot of things have been kind of stuck the way they were for a long time, and people have gotten kind of, uh-oh, uh how am I going to get this, uh-oh, I, I broke this glass permanently. I fixed it. Okay. Can I, oh no. It seems like any attempt I make to leave this top secret demise bunker of mine will only leave traces. Okay, we're going to have to try and get out of here with the magic of a rocket. Whoa, it wasn't magical enough. Anyway, it seems like we're kind of at an inflection point where all of a sudden, things that were so static before that people felt like they were unchangeable, things that felt unconquerable, might have a little bit more give to them. Because for something like OK Boomer to take off at the rate that it did, I don't think that's just people wanting to be jerks and be dismissive. I think that's people who are angry about things being unsatisfying. I don't think that's just folks wanting to be dismissive. I think that's folks vocalizing the anger that they feel at being dismissed. I think folks here have felt like problems have gone unfixed and unattended for far too long, and they're now like willing to say, look, I'm going to punch through some leaves, take it or leave it. I'm going to fall down a layer or two. I'm going to knock you down a notch apple. And, uh, you know, that is the sort of thing that demonstrates a sort of uh, activation energy. I think that OK Boomer didn't do well because OK Boomer is great. I think OK Boomer is 
kind of like a barometer demonstrating how many people feel like the world is apathetic right now. And so they just want to they just want to demonstrate I see your apathy world and I'm going to put a little bit back out there. But demonstrating apathy is intrinsically unfulfilling. I mean, that's the whole point of the show Daria is that she's like constantly apathetic because she feels like she's being ignored or she feels like she's powerless, but like she still is exhausted by it. Like being apathetic is exhausted in and of itself in such a way that one eventually will either just completely give up or one will decide, hey, I'm going to take some sort of new action. And I feel like the young people saying, okay, Boomer, are a little bit too young to just completely give up. So what happens then? You know how in some games, especially like Pokemon Go, there will be certain times of the year where they're like, you get double candy or twice as much experience or triple this or five times that. I really think that the rise of OK Boomer is a hopeful thing. I believe it signals we are entering kind of a more receptive to change era almost or, or moment in time. Eras are long. This might be a brief window. There might not be a long time to take advantage of this, but I think that if you were going to try and do something good in the world and organize other people to take action to improve things in some ways, this is a great time to do it. It's always a good time to try to improve the world, but I think that the odds of your succeeding, your odds of moving the needle, even just a little tiny bit, might be higher this month than they were last month. They might be higher this year than they were last year. You know, a lot of folks are discouraged by the status quo sticking around for so long. And uh, eventually, they're going to start lashing out and fighting back. We're seeing some lashing out. Maybe that lashing out isn't intrinsically valuable to society. But I think it is a valuable signal to society. It is time to think about what you care about. Try to find others who care about the same thing. Get out there and uh, maybe do something. So ask yourself, what could be better? What could I do better? What could those around me do better? And uh, find a way to make it happen. You know, I do what little I can where I can, you know. I'm a simple man. I walk these walls. Hey. I was going to say I walk these halls. But apparently there's stuff in the walls. A lot of things going on here. A lot of things going on. But you know, that's ideal. We want to have a nice, well-trapped... Uh, demise bunker. That's oh no, I'm gonna fall if I, I'm. I'm really not doing a good job of paying attention to where I'm going. But ah, uh, it is dark out and night time. Don't let the night vision potion fool you. This is terrible time to be outdoors. Anyway, you may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. That's thanks to hundred dollar a month Patreon sponsor, Bioduck. In lieu of that mid-roll ad. We will now offer you a poetry writing prompt. What change will you make scene in this world? Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.